that the loyalty of its daughters, members, is first to their family, second to their family and sisters, and third to God. You may quickly find that loyalty to the third encompasses the prior two, a religion for women, by women, and of women, for all daughters of earth to embrace. Imagine a church that talked about the act of creation and birth as the miracles of miracles it is, and not like the sinful act it is in man's religion. Inside its walls, the decisions concerning the destiny of women would be made by women. A place where your daughters can be taught about the beauty of their bodies and of the glorious acts of creation. It is capable. A place where they are seen as equals of being and not the servants or playthings of any man. A place where you decide the course of destiny for your children and learn the things necessary to make them not mere dreams but firm reality. This is the way, your way. If you are content with the hand life has dealt you, then be silent. Remain as you are. If you think yourself to be the second class citizen men have said you are, then be silent. If you think the world is fine, that it needs nothing more, then be silent. If you are content to let men run the planet alone as they see fit and decide the fate of your children, then be silent. But if your soul cries out for liberation from those who have oppressed you, then roar in defiance. If you want to make a better world, then scream to the heavens your desires. And if you want to bring the word of God to all people of this world, then quietly say to yourself, I do. All these things you can do and more. Be proud of your difference. Be proud to be a woman. Be proud to be a virgin, a mother, or simply a woman who is e the equal of any man. In future way messages, it I will discuss the steps necessary for you to accomplish these things. I will give you now the first task of the daughters of earth. You must reveal the final prophecies of Fatima, Fatima to your fellow sisters. Ask the Pope to release them to you. He is a good man, one of a few there. Tell him the Rose has asked him to perform one last underground performance right under the very noses of those who seek to hide from you the light. Tell him to be the man of his youth one final time. If there is anything left, of the word of God inside, he will know what she means. If he refuses, then you must go right into the source. She will not. I will give you a hint of what is contained in the secrets. It tells of the death of the old and of the birth of the new. It foretells your rise and the fall of those in high places. It tells of the coming of the way. It is not friendly to Rome or to any other religion. If for it foretells unity. End. Next way chapter will be the last in the Messiah Project series. I don't intend to go through every verse of the Quran. The things I have spoken of in this message occurred also in the Quran. The males took over what has been given to both men and women. She who sent Gabriel to Mary also sent him to Fatima. This is why she chose to appear to the three children at the town of Fatima. It was named after her. This is why her symbols, the crescent moon and the star, still are sacred to them. Unlike other religions, Islam has not changed the meaning of large parts of the Quran. In it can still be found the words that Gabriel gave to Muhammad. The Domo had learned a lesson with Christianity. They saw their message changed by the pens of men. They saw entire new philosophies simply inserted so that they would not have the same kind of problem with the Quran they put in a, they put in a code at the beginning of each book. This code would identify those from the original source. Gabriel, from those which men later took it upon themselves to add, I would like you to read the Quran, for it is the final word of God given by the last great prophet. Its purpose was to unite mankind and all religions into one, so that you can know what is original and what has been added. 
I will decipher the first code for you now. I will use the largest and first book of the Quran. It is called, quote unquote, C-O-W, cow. What is it? Why is it called the cow? Check out any book of Egyptian goddesses and look at Hathor. You will find she is called the sacred white cow of heaven. Remember that I told you, told you the other project was given to Isis' twin sister. Her name is Hathor. In other countries, she was called by other names. In ancient Persia, she was called Lamashta. The Catholic Church would later identify, identify her with Satan and call any female demon or witch Lamia. Same old story, isn't it? At the very beginning of each of the major chapters of the Quran, a couple of words preceding the actual start of the verses. This code has defied explanation for 1,500 years. Scholars have argued rigorous, rigorously among each other as to their exact meaning. We don't care about that because it was not put there for their benefit anyway, but for yours. When the time comes, the time is now. The code of the first book of the cow, Hathor, rends as follow, Alif Lam Mim. It was put there so you could later identify it as one of her verses that she gave Muhammad. It must be read like ancient Hebrew was read from right to left. I will reverse it now so you can better read it. Mim la ma, mim la ma left. These words are spelled slightly different in various languages. Here is a more well known form of their spelling. Mim lam alif. What is it? What does it mean? It is one of the most ancient blessing prayers ever. It asks for a blessing and names who the blessing must come from. Lam is the Persian name for Hathor. It has been placed between the two other words to signify she is contained in the blessing. The two outer words are familiar to any Hebrew as Mem Ali or Ma, blessing of water. It was written on amulets in ancient times to involve the protection of Ma. In this case, they are invoking the blessing of a particular daughter of Ma, La Mashta. It symbolizes both the concept of water of the beginning, appropriate for the beginning of the Quran, is it not? Both Isis and Hathor were water goddesses. Isis' other name is Stella Maris, star, star of the sea, and is the patron goddess of all her mariners. By saying these words at the beginning of the chapter, you are invoking the blessing of the goddess for both protection and to guide you into understanding of what follows. They did this to ensure that their words would be clearly identifiable from those of men. Rather smarter, Pathor, don't you think? What about the other books that don't have these codes in front of them? You don't have to be a rock aside. What about the other books that don't have these codes in front of them? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that one out, do you? Just so there's no doubt that I know what I'm talking about, I'll do one more for you. It's one of my very favorite of all the verses. Why? Because it was a joint effort between Hathor and Isis. It is entitled Thunder. Yes, the same thunder Jesus named his apostles after, and the same 